What I'd like to do now is address the overbank to spiral dive. Now this is a highly dangerous scenario to end up in and actually reasonably common in loss of control in flight accidents. Um, but uh, understand now that what is the imminent threat in a spiral dive? Well, it's either exceeding V&E of the airplane, which is certainly very possible in a jet uh, from altitude, uh, but two, uh, uh, ground impact, certainly at low altitude. But there's a third one as well, and that is risking structural failure depending on uh, the pilot's normal pilot reaction to recovering out of a spiral dive. All right? So what I'd like to do now is just uh, remind you that Pilots end up in spiral dives typically for one of three reasons. Either they have become distracted while maneuvering or disoriented or they've had a primary attitude indicator failure in IMC conditions and failed to cross-check with the standby. Right? Now before we get into actual recovery principles here and dealing with what to do, let me just remind you of some concepts here. We can see here in this slide that one of the whole reason we put an airplane in an angle of bank is to point our lift vector, which is always perpendicular to the wings, point our lift vector off in the direction we want to go, and this creates a horizontal component of the lift. All right, and this horizontal component is actually what generates a turn right, uh, in the airplane. Now remember, when you roll your airplane into a bank angle, you actually will reduce vertical component of lift. All right, and therefore, the airplane will begin to lose altitude unless you do what? Unless you increase your lift, keeping the vertical component the same or equal and opposite to the weight vector. All right? So this is the whole reason when you roll into an angle of bank, you then begin to pull back, increasing your lift that the wings are producing, which keeps your vertical component the same depending on how much G, how many, uh, how much you pull. Now when you pull back, you will feel that as G's. All right. So therefore, geometrically, geometrically, we actually have given G loads, you have to pull in various bank angles in order to hold altitude, say, for a level turn. And you can see here 1.4 G's for 45, 2 for 60, and 3 G's for 70 degrees angle bank. Notice 5.7 G's for an 80 degree angle bank. Now think about that. Those of you flying transport category uh, airplanes like airliners, you, could, you can't even do over a 66 degree bank angle uh, and hold altitude if you had the speed in which to pull 2.5 G's, in which you would have to be at mode maneuvering speed in order to do that. Notice those of you flying normal category airplanes, you have 3.8 G limit load on your airplane. Your critical bank angle is actually about 73 degrees. All right, 73 degrees bank angle is your maximum that you can hold, expect to be able to hold altitude if you're willing and able to pull through 3.8 G's. All right. So obviously, bank angles greater than those uh, is going to result in altitude loss, all right? Think about now maneuvering while you're in the pattern and you're slow. You don't even have those kind of Gs available to you, not even close. So it wouldn't take many bank it wouldn't take much bank angle for you to be nose low, wanting to pull away from the ground, slow, and you could easily pull the airplane into an accelerated stall. Uh, all right, as you as you began to pull, so pulling and increasing G load in a nose low overbank situation is not necessarily one of the best things to do. All right, we probably should either unload or remain unloaded, and then get the airplane reoriented, just like it talks about in the newsletter. It's all about reorienting the lift factor, and then pulling away, then increasing G load to pull away from the ground. All right. Um, but understand now, even though you're going to a normal pilot reaction is to want to pull and increase G load, all right, there are several disadvantages uh, to doing that. And as the newsletter addresses, uh, if you begin to pull high G's and trying to roll at the same time, especially if you're close to your limit load of your airplane, you're now going to impose asymmetrical G loading on the airplane. You are risking potential structural failure on one wing. You're going to impose the load on that out, outboard wing uh, over 30% 
over 30%. So you're risking literally breaking or ripping off a wing while you're doing a rolling pull, which again is a normal pilot reaction to this scenario in a life-threatening time critical situation. So again, another thing you have to keep in mind is that when you increase G-load, you are actually decreasing your roll performance uh, on the airplane. Right? As you pull and roll, you will have less roll rate available to you. And think about that a second. As we agree, the solution is to get the lift factor pointing to the sky and then pull away. In other words, the sooner you roll, the quicker you roll upright, the sooner you're pulling away from the ground. Right? In order to maximize roll rate on the airplane, we must unload, remain unloaded, roll upright, and then pull. Another disadvantage is uh, to simply pulling and rolling a, as a result of uh, a nose low overbank situation is what if your bank angle is say beyond 90 degrees angle of bank all right and you allow yourself now to resort to that normal pilot instinct of pulling even though you may know to roll you will now increase dive angle which results in tremendous altitude loss all right compared to remaining unloaded or getting unloaded, roll upright and then pull, and then pull, all right? So three very, really important reasons why we can't resort to simply uh, rolling and pulling at the same time. Unfortunately, it is counterintuitive and it's very difficult in a time-critical, life-threatening situation. It's easy for us to practice that in the simulator but I see it every day when I fly with professional pilots. Most pilots have never even experienced a high G spiral dive and seen or felt what it's like and the intimidation and had a chance to even practice the counterintuitive nature of being able to recover properly uh, or more effectively and safely rather than resorting to a rolling pull, which potentially is very high risk. All right, thanks for joining me.